Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. It is Friday the 5th of December. Thanks for joining me for our weekend weather update and the outlook right across next week. And we kick off with the satellite map today. Certainly not as much cloud around the country at the moment uh, on the infrared imagery. Now, someone asked me yesterday, what do the colors mean on the infrared satellite map? Basically, where you see the color, that is the cloud building up into the atmosphere and getting colder. And so the satellite imagery captures that. So lower level cloud that you see north of New Zealand shows up as grey, the higher the clouds get into the atmosphere, uh, the colours change. And so you can see yellow is high cloud, as well as bigger clouds that bubble up with rain. So it doesn't necessarily mean rain, it just means the height and the temperature of those clouds. So lower clouds in the North Island, clouds that are higher up into the atmosphere coming through into the South Island. Here is the air pressure map going into this evening. So temperatures were down this morning in a number of places, and then this afternoon they're going to boost back up again. But we've got this uh, two different airflows, one coming from south of the country, dropping temperatures in the lower third of the South Island. And then you only have to go a little bit further up the road. And these nor'westers are coming out of around Queensland and the Coral Sea. So that is why we're going to have some higher temperatures as we go through this afternoon. And this temperature map from the team at predictwind.com shows exactly what I'm talking about. That colder airflow coming into the lower part of the South Island where you see the blue, that is mostly the mountain tops. And then on the eastern side, across the Canterbury Plains up to Marlborough, parts of Nelson, the temperature there going up into the late 20s, maybe even getting into the 30 degree mark as we go into uh, three o'clock this afternoon. You can see these maps under temperatures on the Weather Watch website and in our free app. So speaking of the cooler air that's around, tomorrow morning, now look, obviously not much of a frost risk around New Zealand, but it certainly shows you around Queenstown, temperatures could be down around just two, three, four degrees when you wake up on Saturday morning. Here is the Saturday lunchtime setup. So we've got pretty much high pressure around the country and that encourages a westerly wind into New Zealand for most areas, but not all. So if you live in Canterbury or Christchurch, you probably notice that your temperatures today are right up there around that 30 degree mark and tomorrow you basically lose 10 degrees off your temperature because there may be more of an easterly breeze kicking in tomorrow. The hot nor'west is the next surge coming through on Sunday. So they're out here at sea on Saturday. Dry for many places, but we do see a little bit of wet weather moving up the west coast. On Sunday, now we get those northwesterlies out of Australia. So that's why our temperatures on Sunday in many places at the top of New Zealand and along the east we'll see those uh, higher temperatures because you know that nor'wester at this time of the year, especially when it comes out of Australia, perfect recipe to make for a hot day and get to that 30 degree mark or close to it. So rain in Fiordland, Southwestland moves further up the coast as we go into the day. But if you're in Greymouth northwards, you know, it's mostly dry. If you're down around Southland and Stewart Island, you will get or might get some of that spillover, but the further east you go, the drier it is. So here is the temperature map for Sunday, again showing the, the lower temperatures over on the west coast, but the heat right along the east, all the way from the Catlins right up to around Gisborne, and some parts here around Hawke's Bay, Gisborne could be going up and over the 30 degree mark. So it is a pretty warm to hot Sunday, but not for everybody. If you're on the west coast or through the Southern Alps, it may not be quite as warm. Here's Monday's setup. So those westerlies sort of break apart and you can see all the different isobar shapes, which means temperatures will be variable on Monday, which means some areas may be quite a bit cooler than they were on Sunday. Nothing majorly cold in there though, as you might have noticed, the polar boundary is not here on the map, so there's a good sign of, uh, of things changing. But if you're in the North Island, more of a La Nina setup with that northeasterly coming in, it may curve around as a nor'wester. No matter how you look at that, that's a pretty warm setup in most places. As we go into next week, now we start to see this subtropical low and high pressure to the east of New Zealand ballooning out over the Tasman Sea. So that low kind of falls into that high pressure zone surrounded by high pressure and that just rips it apart. So the low might look menacing and it, it probably is a little bit if you're out at sea. But as far as land is concerned, the only thing you'll probably notice on Tuesday might be a wee bit of high cloud increasing at the top of the North Island and an east to southeast wind just starting to pick up or east to northeast, depending on where you are. Then nor'westers pick up as you go down the country again. The polar boundary, I didn't highlight it today, but it is here south of the country, which means you know, your temperatures may not be as warm around Southland and some parts of Otago on Tuesday, but it's certainly not a cold day. But by Wednesday, the polar boundary comes up and right into, or right next to, Stewart Island. 
So that just means a bit of a cold front comes into southern parts of Otago, a bit of wet weather, temperatures down a wee bit. Further northwards, uh, it's certainly dry, but the low falling apart, high pressure east and west, and to some degree in the middle here over the North Island, means that that low, as large as it is, will start to be shredded. And you'll notice that on Thursday even more so as it just falls apart. And why is that happening? Because of the high pressure that is around the country. So this is an interesting setup. It kind of matches what I've said about where I think we're going this summer with the weather, with this sort of weak La Nina that has formed. And we've basically had the conditions for it since about September. But at the same time, the sudden stratospheric warming that happened back in winter and early spring over Antarctica means that the blue line, the polar vortex, is really wavy and it comes up and it's down and that's why we're seeing polar blasts in Australia off and on and we're not getting every one of them because sometimes that polar blast comes up around there and then drops down as it passes us. In this example, that is coming up and into Southland and Stewart Island. I'm making a big deal about it because there's not much else to talk about, but it's not a major cold event, but you, you will notice in Southland, Invercargill on Thursday, those temperatures are just down a bit from where they might be over the coming weekend. And with the low further to the north, that brings in this easterly wind to some areas in the North Island, but some of you may even have a southerly because of the next high that's trying to build. So let's go to the end of next week. We talked about the tropical cyclone risk yesterday. It is looking quite likely now. We're seeing it in a number of modeling uh, consistent for quite a few days. So we do expect around the Solomon Sea, up here around the Solomon Islands, north of the Coral Sea area, a tropical cyclone to form at some point next week, and it may become a severe tropical cyclone. That means it's category three or higher. That is certainly possible here by the end of next week. Vanuatu nearby and New Caledonia and the tracking seems to be pointing it uh, southeast. Now keep in mind what just happened to that subtropical low as it came in and it runs into big high pressure belts. And this high pressure goes all the way up to about north of New Caledonia, which means as soon as that tropical cyclone comes down to about this zone here around New Caledonia, it will start to interact with high pressure and that can start to make it fall apart. So all eyes on that high and where it will be end of next week, next weekend, the following week to kind of make sense of what will happen to that system up here. But it's worth noting now because it has uh, formed and it's showing up in some of the models. Look at the temperatures where it's forming as well. Sea surface temperatures, big thanks to earth.nullschool.net, 30.7 degrees, more than or about 10 degrees warmer than the sea surface temperatures at the top of the North Island. So pretty you know, hot water or warm to hot water, depending on how you view it. And so that is the perfect fuel for a storm to get stronger. But like I say, as it goes southwards, high pressure may play a role. Here is the seven day rain format before I leave. Basically very little rain around the North Island, bottom of the scale right there. Similar for Nelson, Marlborough, most of Canterbury, but it's once you get down to Otago Southland and obviously the West Coast uh, where we're gonna see that rain, but the bulk of it falling where it should be in Fiordland. That's all from me for this week. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend.